years in construction, it's time to fire up Germany's revolutionary fusion machine. It's a tense moment. Welcome to a groundbreaking moment in the world of nuclear fusion. Germany's latest marvel, a cutting-edge nuclear reactor, is finally kicking into gear, promising to outshine even the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, ER, in its quest for clean, limitless energy. This reactor isn't just a leap forward, it's a quantum jump in the technology that could power our future. Stay tuned as we dive deep into how Germany is leading the charge, potentially revolutionizing our energy landscape forever. If we achieve everything, to put all the elements together to make fusion happen, then we have an abundant, clean, CO2-neutral, no climate-neutral energy source. Nuclear fusion is the process of combining lighter nuclei into heavier ones, releasing enormous amounts of energy in the process. This is actually how the sun and other stars produce their light and heat. Scientists have been fascinated by the idea of harnessing fusion power for peaceful purposes since the early 20th century when they discovered the basic principles of nuclear reactions. However, achieving controlled fusion on Earth has proven to be a formidable challenge, requiring extreme temperatures, pressures, and magnetic fields to sustain a plasma, the state of matter where fusion occurs, until now. The history of fusion research is full of breakthroughs and setbacks, as well as international collaboration and competition, with a lot of drama and intrigue thrown in. The first experiments with fusion were conducted in the 1930s, when physicists bombarded light elements with accelerated particles and observed the production of new isotopes and neutrons. In the 1940s, fusion was used to create the first thermonuclear weapons, which unleashed devastating power by igniting fusion fuel with a fission bomb. In the 1950s, after the secrets of the hydrogen bomb were declassified, scientists began to explore the possibility of using fusion for peaceful energy production. They devised various devices to confine and heat plasmas, such as the pinch, the mirror, the stellarator, and the tokamak. The tokamak is a donut-shaped magnetic configuration invented in the Soviet Union and has proven to be the most successful and widely adopted design. The tokamak concept was further developed and improved by many countries, especially the United States, the United Kingdom, France, Japan, and China. By the 1970s, tokamaks achieved temperatures and densities high enough to produce significant fusion reactions, but still far from the break-even point where the fusion power equals the input power. The 1980s saw the construction of larger and more powerful tokamaks such as the Joint European Taurus, or JET, in the UK, and the Tokamak Fusion Test Reactor, or TFTR, in the US, which reached record levels of fusion power and plasma performance. However, these machines also faced technical and financial difficulties, as well as political and environmental opposition. In the late 1980s, the idea of building an international fusion project emerged as a way to share the costs and risks as well as the scientific and technological benefits of pursuing fusion energy. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITR, was born as a collaborative effort between odd bedfellows like the European Union, the United States, the Soviet Union now known as Russia, Japan, and China. India and South Korea would join later. The aim of ITAR is to demonstrate the scientific and technological feasibility of fusion as a new energy source and to take fusion energy to the threshold of industrial exploitation. The ITER reactor is designed to produce 500 megawatts of fusion power for at least 400 seconds, with a tenfold gain of plasma heating power, meaning that for every 50 megawatts of input power, the plasma will generate 500 megawatts of output power. This would be the first time that a fusion device achieves a burning plasma, where the self-heating of the plasma by nuclear fusion reactions dominates all other forms of heating. The ITR reactor is based on the tokamak principle, but with several innovations and enhancements. The ITR tokamak will have a major radius of 6.2 meters and a plasma volume of 840 cubic meters, making it the largest and most complex fusion machine ever built. The ITER tokamak will use superconducting magnets to create a toroidal magnetic field of 5.3 tesla 
and a poloidal magnetic field of up to 6 tesla, which will confine and shape the plasma. The ITER tokamak will also use various heating and current drive systems, such as neutral beam injection, radio frequency waves, and electron cyclotron waves, to heat and control the plasma. The ITER tokamak will use a mixture of deuterium and tritium, two isotopes of hydrogen, as the fusion fuel. Deuterium is abundant in nature, while tritium will be produced by the ITER reactor itself. By using lithium blankets that surround the plasma and absorb the neutrons generated by the fusion reactions. The ITER project is being built in saint paul le durance France, next to the Catarache facility, one of the largest nuclear research centers in Europe. The construction of the ITER site began in 2010, after decades of negotiations and preparations. The ITER project involves thousands of scientists, engineers and workers from 35 countries, as well as hundreds of companies and institutions. The ITER project is expected to cost about 20 billion euros and to be completed by 2025 when the first plasma is planned to be achieved. It's a $22 billion science experiment between a whole host of nations all coming together. The ITER project will then enter a 20-year operational phase, during which various experiments and tests will be conducted to optimize the plasma performance and to demonstrate the integrated operation of the fusion reactor. The ITR project will also pave the way for the next step in fusion energy development, the DEMO reactor, which will aim to produce electricity from fusion on a commercial scale. However, a German nuclear fusion reactor is threatening to overshadow the almighty ITER with its latest advancements. But how do nuclear fusion reactors work? To answer these questions, let us first understand the basic principle of nuclear fusion. When two nuclei of hydrogen isotopes, such as deuterium and tritium, are brought close enough together, they can overcome the electrostatic repulsion between their positive charges and fuse into a heavier nucleus of helium. This fusion reaction releases a large amount of energy, mainly in the form of a high-energy neutron and some gamma rays. The energy released by the fusion reaction is proportional to the mass difference between the initial and final nuclei. This mass difference is converted into energy according to Einstein's famous equation E equals m times c raised to the power of 2, where E is the energy, m is the mass, and c is the speed of light. The mass difference for the deuterium-tritium fusion reaction is about 0.7% of the initial mass, which means that a small amount of mass can produce a huge amount of energy. For example, one gram of deuterium-tritium fuel can generate as much energy as 11 tons of coal. The problem, however, is that achieving nuclear fusion is far from easy. The hydrogen nuclei need to be heated to very high temperatures, about 100 million degrees Celsius, to make them move fast enough to collide and fuse. They also need to be confined and compressed to a high density, so that the fusion rate is high enough to sustain the reaction. These conditions are known as the Lawson criterion, and they require a lot of energy and technology to create and maintain. There are different ways to achieve the Lawson criterion, but the most promising one is using magnetic confinement. This method uses powerful magnets to create a donut-shaped magnetic field called a tokamak that traps and shapes the plasma, which is a state of matter where the atoms are ionized and separated into electrons and nuclei. The plasma is heated by injecting particle beams, microwaves, or electric currents. And the magnetic field prevents the plasma from touching the walls of the reactor, which cools it down and stops the fusion. The magnetic confinement method has been successfully demonstrated in several experimental reactors around the world, such as JET in the UK, TFTR in the US, and K-STAR in South Korea. These reactors have achieved temperatures and densities close to the Lawson criterion, and have produced significant amounts of fusion energy, up to 16 megawatts in JET. However, they have not yet reached the break-even point, where the fusion energy output is equal to the energy input. Nuclear fusion reactors work by creating and sustaining the extreme conditions needed for fusion to occur, and by harnessing the energy produced by the fusion reactions. They use magnetic confinement to trap and shape the plasma, which is heated by various methods to reach high temperatures and densities. They also use lithium blankets to absorb the fusion neutrons and breed more tritium fuel. 
Nuclear fusion reactors have the potential to provide clean, abundant, and safe energy for humanity and to revolutionize the world's energy landscape. Like we said earlier, achieving nuclear fusion on Earth is very difficult. It requires extremely high temperatures, pressures, and densities to overcome the natural repulsion between positively charged nuclei. Moreover, the fusion plasma, a hot and ionized gas, must be confined and stabilized for long enough to sustain the reaction. But there are two main approaches to achieve these conditions, magnetic confinement and inertial confinement. Magnetic confinement. Magnetic confinement uses strong magnetic fields to confine and shape the fusion plasma, preventing it from touching the walls of the reactor. The magnetic fields also help to heat and compress the plasma, increasing the chances of fusion. The most popular and advanced design for magnetic confinement is the tokamak. A tokamak is a donut-shaped device that creates a toroidal or ring-shaped magnetic field by running a large electric current through the plasma. The plasma is also surrounded by another set of coils that produce a poloidal or twisted magnetic field, resulting in a helical field that keeps the plasma in equilibrium. So, the tokamak is the basis of the ITER project. Another promising design for magnetic confinement is the Stellarator. A Stellarator is similar to a tokamak, but it has a more complex shape and does not rely on a plasma current to generate the magnetic field. Instead, it uses a set of twisted coils that are carefully designed to produce the optimal field configuration. The advantage of a Stellarator is that it can operate in a steady state without the risk of plasma disruptions that can occur in a tokamak due to instabilities in the current. The Stellarator is the focus of the Wendelstein 7X project, a German experiment that is the largest and most advanced Stellarator in the world. Wendelstein 7X aims to demonstrate the feasibility of a Stellarator as a fusion power plant by achieving high plasma densities, temperatures, and confinement times. Wendelstein 7X started plasma operations in 2015 and is undergoing upgrades to increase its heating power and plasma duration. The Stellarator is actually one of the most fascinating and promising concepts in fusion research. Unlike the more common tokamak, which relies on a current flowing in the plasma to create part of the magnetic field, the Stellarator generates the entire magnetic field externally. This means that the Stellarator does not need to induce or sustain a plasma current, which can cause instabilities and disruptions in the tokamak. The Stellarator can also operate in a steady-state mode, without the need for periodic pulses or ramps of the plasma current. This makes the Stellarator a potentially more robust and reliable fusion device. The Stellarator was invented by scientist Lyman Spitzer in 1951, and was the first fusion device to demonstrate plasma confinement. However, the Stellarator faced many technical challenges, such as the complex and precise shape of the magnetic coils, the high heat and particle losses, and the difficulty of maintaining plasma equilibrium and stability. The Stellarator was overshadowed by the tokamak, which showed superior performance and simplicity in the 1960s and 1970s. Stellarator research was largely abandoned in the U.S., but continued in Germany and Japan, where new designs and innovations were developed. The Stellarator has seen a resurgence of interest in the last few decades, thanks to the advances in computational power, engineering techniques, and plasma physics. One of the key breakthroughs was the discovery of quasi-symmetry, a property that allows the Stellarator to reduce the transport losses and achieve high plasma confinement. Quasi-symmetry means that the magnetic field strength is approximately constant along the field lines, which reduces the drift of the plasma particles across the magnetic surfaces. Quasi-symmetry can be achieved by carefully designing the shape and twist of the magnetic coils, using sophisticated optimization algorithms and supercomputers. Several new Stellarator devices have been built or are under construction to test the quasi-symmetric concept and other aspects of Stellarator physics. The most advanced and ambitious Stellarator is the Wendelstein 7X or W7X in Germany, which is the largest and most complex Stellarator ever built. W7X has 50 non-planar magnetic coils, each weighing about six tons, that create a highly optimized quasi-symmetric magnetic field. 
W7X aims to demonstrate the feasibility and advantages of the Stellarator as a fusion reactor by achieving high plasma densities, temperatures, and confinement times. W7X has already achieved several world records, such as the highest fusion triple product for a Stellarator and the longest plasma discharge duration of more than 100 seconds. Another important Stellarator is the Helicoly Symmetric Experiment, or HSX, which is the first Stellarator to have a continuous helical symmetry. This means that the magnetic field strength is exactly constant along the helical field lines, which minimizes the neoclassical transport losses. HSX has a modular coil design, which allows for more flexibility and control over the magnetic configuration. HSX aims to explore the effects of helical symmetry on plasma turbulence, transport, and stability. The largest stellarator in the world is the Large Helical Device, or LHD, in Japan, which has a heliotron configuration. This means that the magnetic field is generated by a combination of a helical coil and a poloidal coil, which produce a twisted and helical magnetic surface. LHD has a major radius of 3.9 meters and a plasma volume of 30 cubic meters, which allow for high plasma parameters and long pulse operation. LHD aims to study the physics of high beta plasmas, which have a high ratio of plasma pressure to magnetic pressure and are relevant for fusion reactors. The Stellarator is a remarkable and elegant solution to the challenge of creating and controlling a fusion plasma. It offers many advantages over the tokamak, such as the elimination of the plasma current, the possibility of steady-state operation, and the flexibility of the magnetic configuration. The Stellarator also poses many challenges, such as the complexity and cost of the magnetic coils, the optimization of the magnetic field, and the understanding of the plasma behavior. The Stellarator is a testament to the ingenuity and perseverance of fusion scientists and engineers who have overcome many obstacles and achieved impressive results. The Stellarator is a worthy contender for the ultimate goal of fusion energy and deserves more attention and support from the scientific community and the public. Inertial Confinement Inertial confinement uses powerful lasers or particle beams to heat and compress a small pellet of fusion fuel, typically deuterium and tritium, to the point of ignition. The pellet is imploded by the radiation pressure, creating a shock wave that travels inward and raises the temperature and density of the fuel. The fusion reaction then occurs in a tiny region at the center of the pellet, releasing a burst of energy and neutrons. The main challenge of inertial confinement is to achieve a symmetric and uniform implosion, which requires a precise and synchronized delivery of the beams. The implosion must also be fast enough to overcome the loss of heat and pressure due to thermal conduction and hydrodynamic instabilities. The most advanced design for inertial confinement is the Holram. A whole ROM is a hollow cylinder that contains the fuel pellet and is irradiated by laser beams that enter through holes at the ends. The laser beams heat the inner wall of the whole ROM, which emits X-rays that uniformly illuminate and implode the pellet. The whole ROM is the basis of the National Ignition Facility or NIF project, an experiment that is the world's largest and most energetic laser. NIF aims to achieve a self-sustaining fusion reaction, or ignition, by delivering more than 1.8 megajoules of ultraviolet laser energy to a whole realm in a few nanoseconds. NIF began ignition experiments in 2010 and has achieved record levels of neutron yield, fuel density, and energy gain. Another innovative design for inertial confinement is the Z-Pinch. A Z-Pinch is a device that uses a strong electric current to generate a magnetic field that compresses a plasma column, or Z-pinch, along its axis. The plasma column can be formed by a thin wire array, a gas puff, or a liquid jet, and can be driven by a pulsed power generator or a capacitor bank. The Z-pinch can create high temperatures and densities, and can also act as a source of X-rays, neutrons, or ions. The Z-pinch is the focus of the Z-machine project a U.S. experiment that is the world's most powerful pulsed power generator. Z-Machine can deliver up to 26 megamoles of electrical energy to a Z-Pinch load, creating plasma conditions that are relevant for fusion and other applications.
Z-Machine has demonstrated the ability to produce high-quality X-rays, to drive whole realms and fuel pellets, and to generate fusion neutrons. But this is where it gets interesting. In Germany, a new and innovative initiative called Gauss Fusion is challenging ITER's status as the most significant fusion project globally and is working towards building the world's first commercial nuclear fusion reactor within one to two years. Gauss Fusion is a green tech venture founded in 2022 by various European companies from Germany, France, Italy, and Spain with extensive experience in fusion technology. In February 2023, Gauss Fusion completed a founder's pre-seed financing round in initial capital, marking a first milestone on the way to a clean and secure energy source to complement renewable energies. Gauss Fusion's vision is to lead the commercialization of fusion power plants as a magnetic confinement fusion innovator and as architect of the first industrialized gigawatt-class power plant, or Gauss Giga Kraftwerk, by 2045. To achieve this ambitious goal, Gauss Fusion is implementing a strategy based on high-field magnetic confinement fusion, which is considered the fastest and most efficient approach to fusion energy production. High-field magnetic confinement fusion relies on using strong magnetic fields to increase the plasma pressure and density and thus enhance the fusion reaction rate and power output. This allows for smaller and cheaper tokamaks than ITER, which uses low-field magnetic confinement fusion and requires a much larger and more expensive device to achieve the same fusion performance. Gauss Fusion is collaborating closely with researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics IPP, one of the leading fusion research institutes in Europe and the world. The IPP operates two large fusion facilities, the ASDEX Upgrade Tokamak in Garching and the Wendelstein 7X Stellarator in Greifswald. The IPP has been conducting cutting-edge research on plasma physics, magnetic confinement, plasma heating, plasma diagnostics, magnetic field technology, data acquisition and processing, plasma control, plasma theory, materials research, and plasma wall interaction for decades. The IPP also hosts the Program Management Unit of Eurofusion, the European Consortium for the Development of Fusion Energy, which coordinates the fusion research activities of 30 fusion centers from 25 countries of the European Union, as well as Switzerland, Ukraine, and the United Kingdom. Gauss Fusion is benefiting from the scientific expertise and technological know-how of the IPP, as well as from its extensive network of partners and collaborators in the fusion research field. Gauss Fusion is also leveraging the existing infrastructure and facilities of the IPP, such as the ASDEX upgrade Tokamak, which serves as a testbed and prototype for the Gauss Gigacraft work. Gauss Fusion is also planning to use former nuclear fission power plant sites, including their infrastructure, to accelerate construction and reduce the costs of its fusion power plants. While ITER focuses on proving that controlled nuclear fusion is possible, it will not produce electricity commercially. ITER is a scientific experiment and a technological demonstration, not a power plant. ITER's main purpose is to generate knowledge and data that will inform and guide the design and operation of future fusion power plants. ITER is not intended to be connected to the power grid, nor to operate continuously. ITER's fusion power output will be dissipated as heat and not converted into electricity. ITER's fusion power will also be limited by the availability and supply of tritium, a rare and radioactive isotope of hydrogen that is used as fuel for fusion reactors. ITER will rely on external sources of tritium, such as nuclear fission reactors or spallation neutron sources, and will not produce enough tritium to sustain its own operation. ITER will also test some tritium breeding modules, which are devices that use neutrons from fusion reactions to produce more tritium from lithium. But these will not be sufficient to make ITER self-sufficient in tritium. In contrast, Gauss Fusion's goal is to build and operate a commercial nuclear fusion reactor that will produce electricity and generate revenue. Gauss Fusion's fusion power plant will be designed to be connected to the power grid and to operate continuously and reliably. Gauss Fusion's fusion power plant will also be self-sufficient in tritium, as it will use advanced tritium breeding modules that will produce more tritium than it consumes. 
Gauss Fusion's fusion power plant will also have a higher power output and efficiency than ITER, as it will use high-field magnetic confinement fusion and optimized plasma parameters. Gauss Fusion's fusion power plant will also have a lower cost and environmental impact than ITER, as it will use smaller and simpler tokamaks and existing infrastructure. Gauss Fusion's initiative is highly regarded and supported by the scientific community, as well as by key figures and institutions in the fusion research field. Gauss Fusion has attracted top talent and leadership from various domains, such as physics, engineering, business, and finance. Gauss Fusion's supervisory board includes prominent personalities, such as Frank Laukien, the president and CEO of Bruker Corporation, a leading manufacturer of scientific instruments and superconducting magnets, Stefano Buono, the founder and former CEO of Advanced Accelerator Applications, a radiopharmaceutical company, and Siegfried Rusworm, the former chief technology officer of Siemens, a global industrial conglomerate. Gauss Fusion's scientific advisory board includes eminent experts, such as Sybil Gunter, the scientific director of the IPP, Tony Dunn, the program manager of Eurofusion, and Stephen Cowley, the director of the Princeton Plasma Physics Laboratory. Gauss Fusion's initiative is also seen as a viable and realistic path to achieving commercial nuclear fusion, possibly within the next 10 to 20 years. Gauss Fusion is moving at venture speed, applying best practices from industry, and implementing a public-private partnership model with national and European institutions. Gauss Fusion is also benefiting from the rapid advances and innovations in fusion technology, such as superconducting magnets, plasma heating and control systems, and artificial intelligence and machine learning. Gauss Fusion is also taking advantage of the favorable political and social climate for fusion energy, which is driven by the increasing demand for clean and sustainable energy sources, the growing awareness of the climate crisis, and the strong commitment to net zero emission goals. Gauss Fusion is a bold and exciting venture that is revolutionizing the field of fusion energy and challenging the status quo. Gauss Fusion is working closely with researchers at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics and plans to start construction on the world's first commercial nuclear fusion reactor within one to two years.